We welcome you inside. Let's get to the starting lineups for the visiting Anteaters. We talked about the big man, Mamadou Jai, and then there are four seniors that go along with Jai in the starting five for UC Irvine. Alex Young is a 1,000-point scorer in his career. Luke Nelson, over 800 points. And for the Aggies, here's their starting five. Rector, Perkins, Smith, Moore, and Jones. Yes, many of those names are familiar from last year. But as we get it to Jenny Kavnar, Jenny, that's a different starting five than they anticipated having when they started things off a month ago. Yeah, Mark, it is. That's because they're missing David Colette. Last year, he was the second leading points producer for the Aggies. And just because of Colette, it also challenges the chemistry of this team early on, Coach. Well, I, I think it upset a very fine balance of the chemistry of this team, and I think they're still trying to recover from that, Jenny. See if they come out motivated tonight as the Anteaters control the opening tip underneath. Seven foot six. Jai on the ground to the hoop. I don't know how you stop it. You don't stop that. Well, much too deep a post catch on Jones there. Jones has got to body him up and try to keep him from catching it two feet in the paint. And then Jones compounded the, the, the uh, problem by giving him an angle to the back. Perkins using the glass on the runner to tie it up. Darius Perkins, a starter through every game last year, every game this year, coming off a nice game, eight points, five rebounds down at BYU. Long ball from Nelson, not going to go. Big man with a rebound, so you see Irvine going to start it up again with a new shot clock. This is Dunning, the transfer from New Mexico. They're going to go back underneath, and the push and the shove from Jones. And Jai gets fouled. Here he is going to the hoop. Well, watch Jones not stay between him and the basket right there. Give up his stance and give him an open lane to the basket. Post defense, I don't care how big the guy is you're guarding, you got to stay down and stay between him and the basket. Now, there's one thing he struggles with, and that's shooting from the line. That ball looks like a grapefruit in his hand. It looks like he can, he, he can reach the basket from, from the free throw line. That's a long drink of water there, I'll tell you. He gets the first of two. Coming into the game shooting 54% from the free throw line. You know, he's the, uh, the Anteater's leading scorer, but he's not averaging a lot of points. The Anteater's come at you with great balance. They have five guys who average between 9 and 11 points. Jai's only averaging 11. He's off to a pretty good start so far, though, Mark. Here's Shane Rector, new to the Aggies. He'll play the point, his third start. Nice little give and go. And Elston Jones over the big guy for two. Terrific pass by Rector there. The Aggies rely on their pick-and-roll offense, as they call it, and they'll be challenged tonight with big Jai holding court in the, in the paint there. Back out to best. Nelson swings it around. Baseline inside. Big man. And he's got another two. Well, one thing about when you're seven foot six, you're always open, it seems like. They're just kind of throwing it up around the rim and letting him get it again. Only 11 point average. And uh, tonight he, he looks like he's averaging about 25. There's another bucket for Perkins, similar to his first. That runner over. Jai's outstretched arms. Perkins has been a guy that has been a little slow to get started, only averaging six points. He's off to a great start. He and Rector have the chance to have been outstanding backcourt. Rector, the new guy on the block, very, very talented. The coach, they're using him as the point guard and Perkins as the two. They think that might be a better fit going forward. And... Using the baseline is Luke Nelson, the senior from England. Well, the Aggies got to stay in front of someone. That is twice they've let the ball get, get driven right to the paint, which is going to break anybody's defense down, let alone when you got a guy seven foot six standing there to receive the ball. Jones steps out. Here's Smith. Six on the shot clock. Rector. Moves by Jones to the hoop. And they're going to call a foul before he gets the shot off. And late in the shot clock. On, call that on John. Well, that's a tough call. I talked to that particular official before the game, Casey McClendon, 
And you know, they're trying to, the big catchphrase right now is freedom of movement. And they're trying to clean the game up. To me, that, uh, that would not have been called a foul a year ago. Jai sits down after that first foul of the game. And Perkins going to sink another two-pointer. He's got six. Perkins playing with great poise tonight. I mean, he looks relaxed and, and just really on point offensively. So Jai comes off and Giannis Dimakopoulos comes in. The seven-foot-two center who went to high school in L.A. wearing number 12, and he is from Greece. Also, Lou Evans on now for Utah State. Rector trying to find Evans. Loose ball on the ground. Smith goes up strong. Not going to go. Knocked around. And something called a jump ball. Tied up. Basketball stays with so the Aggies. Stay with the Aggies. Elming for the Aggies. Wearing zero. Jared Mark. Rector a little bit loose Three with it. Luke Nelson. On that little bounce pass there. Great. Hustled by Lou Evans to transfer from Tulsa. There, both Evans and Elston Jones getting much more playing time, obviously, since David Collette left the team. Whistle off the ball before Moore got the shot off. And they're going to call a foul on Lou Evans. There's you know, Evans as he runs towards you. Mark, back to my conversation with Casey McClendon. He, he acknowledges there are more fouls being called this year. He says, I hope they give, uh, there's some thought to giving guys six fouls now instead of five. If we're going to call more fouls, we want the best players on the court at the end of the game. I think that's a point well taken. Interesting. Four minutes in, we're tied at eight. Best. And he picked his feet up on that drive. We got a break of the action as Best heads back to the Anteaters huddle. Tied at eight here early on in Logan. Uh, shot clock violations and three-point shots, and they've, they've cut down on the timeout. All that is to speed up the game, to make the game more free-flowing. Uh, my issue is, are they going to stick with it now this next two months? They always come out with something new early, and uh, they call it early, and then they just revert back the way it's always been called. After that break, three subs on for Irvine. Martin, Galloway, and Smith. Long three, Rector. Back of the iron, and there's Alex Young up to grab the rebound. Irvine coming out of that timeout in a 2-3 zone. Rector, not a great shooter. He's not a bad shooter, but putting the ball on the ground is more his game. Jerron Martin can shoot. He was one of nine in their previous game at St. Mary's. Struggled. He's a guy that can hit the three ball. He's done that in his career. Well, he misses that one. Excuse me, Mark. Their guard line struggled in general. Yeah. With their last, uh, in their last game, six for 21 between the two starting guards. That was in a 10-point uh, loss at St. Mary's. Utah State had a loss down the road against BYU. Utah State's an interesting team. They've shot better from the three-point line than they have inside the three-point line. And that's going to drop. Left-handed shot for Dimacopoulos. And again, I think that that post catch is coming way too low. I know you're guarding a guy 7-2 and a guy 7-6 there, but I think you've got to start your defense earlier in the possession and fight them for that for that position and not let them get down and straddle the block and then start trying to guard them. Not going to go for Smith from the corner. Young with Galloway in front of him. Knocked around. Moore comes down with a rebound. Jalen Moore going to run the court. Back inside. Moore off the glass. Jalen Moore Really nice teamwork there. Nice break. Jalen Moore at 6'9", rebounding it, leading the break, giving it up to Perkins, getting ahead of the pack, and Perkins a nice feed back to Jalen Moore. Jalen Moore's second team. All Mountain West Conference last year. Uh, very high level of expectation for that young man this year. Coming off a year when he scored 470 points. Turnover. Back comes Young and Irvine. Wide open. And that J is going to fall for him. Alex Moore already 1,000 points in his career getting a, a splash there. You might call that a shooter's touch. Very close to being the all-time assist leader 
for the Anteaters. He's had an outstanding career there. This zone has really gotten the Aggies back on their heels. They're going to have to hit one, which their last four shots have all come from the perimeter. They're playing a lot of uh, east and west and not enough north and south. They're going to have to get that ball in the paint to collapse the defense a little bit. Aggies, one of their last six. Martin, nobody came on him, so he throws it up and it goes down. Well, I think they're, they're so uh, concerned now about guarding the roll guy with that size. That time, uh, Demacopoulos at 7-2, that they let Martin get it right to the basket. Visitors up three. And Rector throws that away, going down to the corner. Here's the last bucket for the Anteaters. Well, you see this roll here, the Demacopoulos... Kind of getting a lot of attention there. And uh, I tell you, Rector not playing with a whole lot of intent. Very loose with the ball right now. Not getting after it very good defensively. Uh, a kid that's very, very talented. This is just his third starting game. But, boy, he, he better uh, kind of check his whole card and decide he wants to play a little bit. First thing Tim Durier did after becoming the new head coach was go down to Miami-Dade College and... Get Shane Rector to come out to Logan. Martin gives it up. Nelson, an open look. Got it. And there's a tray for Luke Nelson. Luke Nelson, along with Alex Young, a very effective backcourt for the Aggies. Luke Nelson was voted the under-18 player of the year in England before he ever came over to play in the United States. Good size, good shooter, good ball handler. Rector throws it away again, trying to drive the lane and dish it off. There's Mike Best, in. it's easy off the glass, and Tim Dury is going to call the timeout. Well, again, Shane Rector just loose with the basketball and causing points at the other end. The Aggies going to have to tighten. Growing up in Africa, he would get on the internet, look up things about Shaq. He really, really loved the way he played, so he tried to work on that and craft his game, and that is why he wears number 34 for UC Irvine, guys. You know, Jenny, the big man from Senegal in West Africa. And back on the court for the Anteaters. There's Perkins, and that's not going to go. But Evans there to corral it. Perkins, another open look. He'll shoot it. And more, and he got up, but back comes Irvine. Well, again, the Aggies giving in to that three-point shot a little too easy there in that possession. Irvine has stayed with that 2-3 zone. That's what's led him to this 9-0 run along with three turnovers by the Aggies point guard, Shane Rector, since the last uh, media timeout. G.I. steps out, five on the shot clock. That's strong, and it comes down into the hands of the Aggies and Chris Smith. The Aggies will continue to go under that high ball screen until you see Irvine stops and hits a three instead of uh, fighting over the top, top of it. They're, so far, they're 0 for 3 and shooting that. And that won't go for more. That makes Utah State one of their last nine shooting. Tipped away by Chris Smith. Well, in their loss down the road in Provo to BYU earlier in the week, Mark, they went the last 10 possessions of the first half without scoring. And, again, not showing a whole lot of patience right now, just kind of giving in to the three-point shot. That's all well and good if you're shooting them in. If you're not, again, you've got to start penetrating that paint. I've yet to see him dribble a gap. Uh, put, the, put the ball against the defense and force a double team. They've just kind of worked it around the perimeter and, and again, given in to the three-point shot. And BYU was up by 15 to the half in that game. They won by 12. And it's knocked out of the hands of Jai, but you know, win that game of Provo, Utah State, they had a 10-0 run to close it just to kind of make it respectable, like you said. Well, I think you got to give a little credit where credit is due. Dave Rose, the BYU coach, said that was the best defensive game they have played all year. And uh, playing down to Marriott Center with that vast background is a tough place to shoot anyway. And BYU defensively usually makes it a little bit tougher. There's Julian Perry has come in. So is Grayson Moore to his brother Jalen. There is what I've been waiting to see, a little dribble penetration. He moves it around to the corner. Gave it up. Perkins, they swing it. Five, more down the baseline. Looks, kick out, open for Perry. Yes! And that is great news 
for the Aggies and Julian Perry only four for 21, 19 percent. Uh, a kid that started virtually all year last year and has been relegated to the bench, really having a hard time shooting it in from three. Someone lost a shoe there in the paint. Julian Moore kicked it away. And here's Perkins with the board. It's Aaron Wright who lost the shoe, number 32 for Cal Irvine. Aggies moving the ball around in the last bucket. I'd like to see the Aggies be a little bit more aggressive with the dribble penetration against this zone. See the field goal percentage thus far, 9.05 and counting to go in the first half. Jalen Moore's older brother in now, Grayson, a transfer from Northwest Nazarene. He'll take the shot, and that's too strong. Not exactly the one you want there either. Young going to push it, and not going to go. There's Jai trying to put it back, but guess what? Little up and down, little walk. They're going to call it a jump ball. Perry coming from behind, getting his hand on it, and the official's calling a jump ball there. It gives you an idea how big his hands are. It's got to be the greatest block in Julian Perry, Perry's <laughs> Without career. Without a doubt. Yeah. Open look, Nelson. Nope. More. Irvine hasn't scored in the last three plus minutes. Yeah, he's need a good possession here. More down the lane and got it up, got it off the front of the rim though. Well, I think Big Mama Dude Jai had something to do with that standing in front of the rim there with not just a 7 6, but boy, his arms. I, I don't know what hit. I, I would suspect that on his tiptoes, anyway, he can put his hands on the rim. His wingspan is 8 foot 3, coach. Five on the shot clock. Young going to throw it up, fading away, and it goes down for Alex Young. That gives you a. Good look at why the guy's a thousand point scorer in his career. Co freshman of the year when he came out of Phoenix High School in Oregon, where he was a 4A player of the year and led his team to a state championship. Again, he's had a great career in the top 10 in steals in the career list and will end up being their all time leading assist guy. Another shot by Grayson Moore that's too strong, and Jai brings it down. And yeah, here's Young. Phoenix, Oregon, a little bit south of Medford. This this Anteaters team, they went 21 and 13 last year. They went to the NCAA tournament. They've had success the last three years running. Best follows up, grabs it, jump ball. Well, Russell Turner, the coach, has done a, a great job. The Aggies having trouble holding on to the lead here and attacking that zone down 15-21 record is 71 and 44 with 320 win seasons. Well, he's done a great job. I want you to revisit that score against Louisville. 57-55. That is one of only two games in the last 52 that they have held an opponent to less than 60 and lost. In the last 52 times they have held opponents to 60, they've won or 60 or less, they've won 50 of them. Well, they're a defensive team last year. They held opponents on the year to 62.1 this year at 66.3. And here's Luke Nelson on the steal. Goes up, tip up, and not going to go. Battled for. Galloway comes out with it. And the Anteaters control. And Nelson will shoot it. That's off. And back in rebound for Chris Smith. Well, remember the Aggies started out making four of their first five shots. Since then, they've gone two of 12, Mark, shooting 35% for the game, but uh, Irvine has stayed in that zone ever since the first media timeout. Quinn Taylor went down the baseline and got rejected. Well, like I say, you, you, you take your seven foot six guy out of the game and you bring a seven foot two guy in for him. And that guy is six foot ten redshirt freshman by the name of Jonathan Galloway that also played out of Richmond, football <laughs> out of Richmond, California. Yeah, he was pretty good target as a tight end. I would suspect 12 on the shot clock rector looks to Tim Durier. He'll call the play more stuck underneath turnaround short and Aaron Wright up for the rebound. 
Jalen Moore only one for five tonight, really having his struggles. With, with David Collette leaving the team, the whole dynamics of the Aggies' offense has changed. They're not getting the same shots that they got with Collette being a, a great offensive post presence. They're not getting double teamed in the post and getting the ball back out for good shots. It, just losing one guy has really changed, again, the whole offensive scheme of this team. And that kick out to Perry didn't go. It's, he couldn't connect on that shot from the corner. The so. Aggies, it's amazing, Mark, excuse me, led the Mountain West Conference last year in three-point shooting and field goal shooting, and they are just having a hard time shooting the ball in this year. Again, they're getting different shots this year than what they got last year. Dimacopoulos couldn't bring that in. He'll head back on defense. The Aggies have started three different lineups this year in only seven games. And, you know, for a team that in September, October, we're counting on playing the same five guys that finished the season last year, well, there, that's been a lot of manipulation by Tim Dure, a lot of searching for the right combination. We're under five to go in the first half, and the Aggies have 14 points. Smith, runner, and now they've got 16. With the and the deuce. Chris Smith, this team's leading scorer. Uh, we talked about him in the open. Honorable mention last year, one of the best catch-and-shoot guys in the Mountain West Conference, but he can get it to the basket as well. I think he's got to be a lot more aggressive against this zone, as I think the entire Aggie team needs to be. As the youngster Smith tied up. Martin knows the shot clock is at two. Fired one up, wouldn't go. Now, I think we've been talking about the tough shooting still. Aggies have a chance to pull closer here. Down by only five. Jones going to go to the hoop, and it's not going to go. But that wasn't an awful shot by Jones, but I would have liked to have seen him throw that ball out of there on what coaches call an X pass to the guy at the elbow. So far, it looks like they've got the wrong guy shooting the wrong shot to, to me, and I don't mean to be critical, but they got too many guys shooting the ball out of rhythm. This zone for the Anteaters has really done a great job of, of getting them out of rhythm. Jerome Martin comes up with a bucket. Four minutes into this game, it was 8-8. Eight, eight. Here we are with three. In our college hoops halftime report, we will have that story, Mark. Yeah, they made that, that higher official on March 30th. Stu and Vicky, they've got some good seats, huh? Right behind the bench, Stu looking uh, the all-time winningest coach in the history of Utah State, looking very fresh and healthy there. Perkins, hot early on, and there's a three ball that's going to help the Cubs. Perkins got him off to a good start. Three of five now, two for four from the three-point line. He and Moore, I'm sorry, he and Smith were two of the best shooters, three-point shooters in the league last year, and this is what they need to get them going is they've got to kick a few of them in from the three-point line. And that's good from beyond the arc to make it 23-19 now. Jai, yeah. Seven foot six. Coming off back to back double doubles. You would think that that would be a normal night for Mamadou Jai. Well, again, it's real easy for me to talk about how you should guard him down there. Uh, but regardless how you guard him, he's seven foot six and you've got, and 300 pounds. It's not like he's a, a real skinny. Seven foot six. He's a big boy down there. Who's the biggest guy that you uh, you were around coaching your career? Well, back when I was assistant coach at the University of Utah, Sean Bradley down at BYU, and I think he was seven foot seven. He was not near uh, the, the the girth that Jai is. And uh, Sean had a long career in the NBA, still coaching high school basketball, I think, in the state of Utah. Smith's going to take that shot. It's going to be short. Lou Evans came through, and they're going to say it went off of. And Anteater is going to stay with the Aggies. And that's a call that Russell Turner's kind of questioning. Yeah. But they'll leave it with Utah State. Evans head fake to the who? Oh, and he almost got it over Jai, who 
Flat-footed, grabs the rebound. God's not only big, he's got good hands. You, I haven't seen him fumble a ball yet, and that's what I was talking about earlier in the broadcast. You've got to start fighting him down the lane line there and not let him get that deep post catch. That time it paid big dividends for Lou Evans. That is Guy's second foul, so he'll set this last two minutes and 19 seconds. There's Russell Turner talking to Jai to take a seat. And that's what I talked about. Starting your defense earlier, not letting him settle in to the low post, and then deciding you're going to decide how to guard him. You've got to fight him all the way down that lane line. Lou Evans, a nice play, the transfer from University of Tulsa. Whistle before the alley-oop try by Moore, and it's against the Aggies. A set play there. That was a nice call by Tim Durier from the bench. Lou Evans a little bit overzealous on this foul, on this block. He cleared it out, didn't he? Yes, he did. Overzealous is kind of an understatement. He uh, full body blocked whoever the anteater player was there. That was Demacopoulos. It was 12 on 12 underneath. And Lou Evans comes out. Elston Jones back in. Demacopoulos and Best both set out essentially the entire last game they lost at St. Mary's with a flu bug. Uh, Mike Best, their starting uh, power forward at 6'10", played four minutes and did score a point. Fourth team foul just called on the Aggies with a minute 53 to go in the half. The Aggies with but 19 points. Remember, they got off to a what I thought was going to be a great start offensively, making four of the first five shots, and boy, they've gone stone cold since then. And that's nothing but net for Alex Young. And a three ball making it a 28-19. Two losses on the season for the Aggies as Rector throws one up and gets it to go down. We're at Duke and at BYU. Well, two pretty tough places to play, obviously, but not a lot of snap and pop to them tonight, Mark. I, I tell you, on their home court, I thought they'd be a little bit more excited to play. I, I think uh, when you're playing bad offensively, that seems to take an emotional toll on you as well, and they're playing bad offensively right now. And what what can't happen is you can't be bad on offense and let that take away from your defense and that's kind of what's going on with them right now not quite as quick uh, to the ball defensively as, as what they need to be and what I've seen them before under a minute to go inside the best back out Demacopoulos and that hook's not going to go the Aggies playing some zone of their own the last couple of possessions Rector will push it to the hoop and on the back end, Jones with the follow-up. Nice drive by Rector there. Rector can really get it to the basket. He's from the Bronx, New York, and he's kind of got a city game. Boy, he can create his own shot. Tonight, he's been awful loose with the ball there, but he got it to the basket, and then Elton Jones cleaned it up. Young, the best, not going to go. Back comes Rector. And it's knocked away by Young, and they're going to call a foul on number one. Let's go back to Rector. You talked about him from the Bronx. Watch Rector get it to the basket where he penetrates it through a crack. Best coming over and kind of taking it away from him. And anytime you let the ball get driven to the paint like that, that offensive rebound came because Rector broke the defense down. Best came over to help and missed the block out on... Uh, on the Aggie center, Big Elston Jones. There's Rector. I asked him if he ever thought a kid from the Bronx would be in Logan, Utah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of gave me that look with one eyebrow up. <laughs> Last shot of the half. Rector, can it go? No. And the horn sounds. You know, all told, Coach, the Aggies have to be happy they're only down by five the way they shot. No, they got on a little bit of run there at the end that helped them gain a little momentum. Double team, and they got better shots last year. This year, their post play is not, uh, no one's paying much attention to the post guys, what it amounts to defensively, so they're not getting as good a look. Starting five with a hard one for both teams. Yai holds it up high. 
back into Jive and knocked away by Jones with 10 on the shot clock. So that's better, I guess, when you're going against a seven foot six guy to start. Well, I think much more active. Uh, Jones got to a front there, didn't allow the ball to be lobbed over his head. Dunning had to get rid of it, a little slip. Five on the shot clock. Young, that one hander is good to go. You thought that was a veteran guard play there, recognizing a short shot clock, putting his head down, penetrating the middle of that zone, and shooting a little runner there. There's a, a, a reason this kid has been honorable mention two years in a row in the Big West. Jones over Jones. Elston Jones, the big sophomore from Goodyear, Arizona, with a bucket. I like that aggressiveness there by Jones. Uh, Jones only a sophomore, only averaging five points. That doesn't mean that he won't develop and become a much better offensive player in the post. And a turnover. Here come the Aggies. And a foul on Dunham, who gets in the way. Here's Elston Jones in the paint here, going to his strong hand. And no fear at all going over the seven foot six Jai there. Really nice jump hook by the young Elston Jones. Got into 28 games last year, so that experience as a freshman can only help. Smith, little dribble drive, back out. Rector kick. Jones again. Got his rebound. Back up. Not going to go. Jones with some hard work. Two of them right at the rim there, and they come away empty. But I like their aggression. Two drives to the paint. One dribble drive led to another dribble drive that led to an easy look at the basket. Mike, Mike Best, the senior, with a couple of points. He throws that up on his dribble drive from the big man. Nothing easy about that for Best. That Jalen Moore did about all he could defensively there. That was a tough shot. Best 6'10". With pretty long arm. Smith, quick release. Not going to go, but there's Elson Jones. And a new 30 for the Aggies. Rector going to pull it back. Overlook the floor. Here's Smith. Jones, quick. He flashes in and gets one off the glass. That was a terrific set play. Tim Durie told his team to bring it back out. I've probably given up. 25 points on that exact play. That's what Stu Moore used to call dribble. That's a small to big cross screen, and that worked to perfection that time. Great call by Tim Durier. Knocked away by Rector. Can't get it from Young. Her dribble drive out, and a shot from Dunning, and lefty with a nice release and a bucket. Dunning not a big score. only averages four points. That was a terrific ball reversal pass by Luke Nelson. Nelson had the shot. That's what you call giving up a good shot to get a great shot. And yeah, there's a block from Jai, who in his freshman year had 106 blocks. Running the court was Mike Best. He went for the jam, and it wouldn't go. Aggies with numbers. Moore. This will be a big transition bucket. Yeah. Yeah. State keeping it within five. Well, Young is not afraid to shoot. And we good. see why. We've been talking about his shot. He gets another one to go down. He's playing like a veteran. I talked about earlier in the game was Cole freshman of the year about three years ago. And uh, a thousand point score. He's had a great career. Well, you can see that Moore maybe altered that shot just a hair because of Jai Young. And there's Best with a put back. That'll make Coach Turner happy after he missed that jam. Well, the Aggies got a great break when, when Best missed that jam. But now they've given up two straight transition shots right at the rim. I don't know where the Aggies' guards are in transition defense. They're nowhere to be found. Let's see if Young goes to the hoop on Rector. He does. And that's going to go for Young. Now that came off the turnover, but the Anteaters last three shots right at the rim. And Alex Young with 13 points as Irvine goes up 41-30.
Alex Young coming right at you. He's turned it up here in the second half. And to watch the American TV show, The White Shadow. That's going back a yeah, few it years is. now. I tell you that uh, he is a known basketball junkie, though. He loves the game. Talking to Russell Turner about him. Guy puts in long hours and loves the game. Just hasn't been able to go down for Smith Jai with the rebound. Now they taught us a guy that played his basketball in Southern California, then went to Davidson. And, and Turner said, I wanted to go to Davidson. I had to go to a D3 school. That was a nice set play coming out of that timeout to get Chris Smith that three point shot. As a coach, you can draw him up, but you can't make him go in. Chris Smith with a great look. And that three ball goes for Luke Nelson. All of a sudden, it's 44-30 Anteaters. Now, remember, I said in the first half that the Aggies were going under that high ball screen and would continue to do that until Irvine stopped and shot one in, which just happened. Now it'll be interesting to see if the Aggies change their defense and try to fight over the top. That's another bucket for Perkins, who has 12. Perkins is only averaging six mark is the one bright spot in this Aggies offense. Miss Nelson just hit that three. Back to the grit inside. Jai, will he go to the hoop? Puts it on the floor. And that is not going to go. And Lou Evans is down, and that's why we've got a whistle. Guys. Guy's first miss of the night, and he did it in a grand fashion. The Aggies call. I thought it was just nothing. I thought it was you hate basketball to say, play. Yeah, you hate to say incidental when someone takes one in the chin, but I think that was just incidental contact. It's incidental when you're doing the TV game. It's not incidental right, when right. you're Lou Evans. Jai didn't miss the shots so of the Aggies with the basketball. Trying to cut into a 12-point lead for the Anteaters. Irvine now back in their 2-3 zone. They, they have done a nice job of switching, but they've played long stretches of this 2-3 zone. Jalen Moore has come in into the middle, and Jalen Moore able to quick shoot that over the 7-foot-2 player from Greece. That may be the best possession of zone offense that the Aggies have had tonight, at least one of the top two or three. And boy, they're going to call foul on Lou Evans. He had his hands up on Team Kogelis. Right, let him off the hook there. He, he, they had him in a bad First way there, Team Kogelis. And players in general, they think they're straight up. I used to tell my guys, you got to have your elbows by your ears to be straight up. And that definitely was not straight up, although Lou Evans thought he was straight up. Also, Jones now replaces Lou Evans. So a second for the guy whose first name is Giannis. This is obviously a very big Anteater team. The Anteaters picked to win the Big West Conference by both the media and the coaches after going through the first ever NCAA tournament last year. And they're four for four from the line here in the game. Came into it shooting 70% as a team. And there's more back-to-back -back buckets for Jalen Moore. And you heard me say earlier in the game that they were playing too much east and west. That's what you call going north and south there. Arrow pointing towards the Aggies. Rector did the hard work as he got a hand on Young who went down the lane. That's a pretty good matchup, Young and Rector. That is quick on quick there. Nice job by Rector. Rector played at Miami Dade. That's where Darius Perkins played too, so there was a connection between the Aggies and that school in South Florida. Here's Perkins. Let's see if Moore's feeling it. Now it loses the handle. And a foul and a reach in. It's going to be on Galloway. Jalen Moore much more aggressive this half, it seems like. Uh, nice step back to his left. That was off a little pick and pop on the Aggies. Pick and roll. Offense. Now, most of the other big players for the Aggies will roll to the basket. Jalen Moore has the option to screen on the ball and then pop. And 
get the ball and then take it one-on-one -on -one just like he did. Correct myself, that foul was on Martin, number zero. That was the first free throw attempt for the Aggies in the basketball game. Here's number two for Moore. Aggies with still plenty of time. Here if they can generate once again a little more offense. Moore's had double digits in five of the team's ten games thus five of the team's seven games thus far. And he's a foul on the rector off the ball. Well he scored in all games last year, every game except two in double digits, and at one time had 18 straight. I think maybe he's trying a little bit too hard this year as well to try to make up for Collette leaving the team and trying to do a little bit more. He just doesn't seem to be quite as natural almost as he was last year. And he's got his 10 in this game, but here's another open look, and Martin sinks a three for the Anteaters. Martin, the leading three-point shooter for this Anteater team. And, Mark, the best time to shoot a three-point shot is after an offensive rebound just like that because the defense isn't matched up there. He came into the game 17-40 to 40 this year. Was third on the team last year with 45 threes. There's more. He's come to life, but that rebound and put back won't go. And Young gets an open look, and that goes down, and all of a sudden, it's 52-37, the big lead of the game for the Anteaters. Well, that is just a killer, a three out of transition like that, and I believe that was Jaron Martin who penetrated that little seam and a little pitch back then to Alex Young. So Irvine on a 6-0 run. And take a look at Alex Young. He now has 16 points. The high score for the Andy. 2 37 lead here at Utah State. Well, this is the third of four straight on the road for them. It doesn't get much easier. They go from here to University of Oregon. Just came home or just came off a game at St. Mary's, one of the premier programs in the WCC. So Coach Turner not afraid to take his team on the road and play. Jai able to turn around and reject Jones. He goes back in. And Jai just holds his hands up and gets the rebound. Let's see if they go to the big man inside. We'll stick with Alex Young who's got a Season high 16 on seven of ten shooting inside. Jai and not going to miss that one with the positioning on Jones. Mark, before that, they were shooting 69 percent this half and four for four from the three point line for 100 percent. So uh, you know now over 70 percent from the field. Mamadou Jai just like a. Hey, uh, just standing in the post in the middle of the lane, just daring anyone to come in there. She has some kind of a story from Senegal. One of the assistant coaches from Irvine, who's from Senegal, was over in his home country and saw him playing in a gym and said, Hey, I think I might want to get you over to the States. <laughs> wow, he's... Uh... They build one of their games earlier in the year at Central Florida. Central Florida had a seven foot six kid named Taco Fall. They said it was the tallest matchup in the history of basketball. Seven six on seven six, where the Anteaters won by one point. Aggies keep the ball with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Jenny mentioned it earlier. Jai wears 34 for Shaq. It's one of the guys he was able to read about as a youngster in West Africa. Smith got a look over Jai. Well, Smith is having a tough time shooting tonight. He really is. One field goal, 0 for 5 from 3. Makes him 1 of 8 by my count, and he's had some good looks. That was a nice end out of bounds play for him. He inbounded and uh, got a nice shot. He can't make it go in, and Jai just continues to dominate the paint. So Mamadou with another bucket. 
And he's got 12 in the game. Perry wins it around. Perry. Perry's second three of the game, and I had talked about before that he had really struggled shooting it in from three. Tonight, he's knocked in a couple. And we're under nine to go here in the second half, and Utah State sitting on 40 points down 16. Martin not shy. He'll throw him up. And Jai has it knocked out of his hands. Now he goes to the hoop. Puts it on the ground and loses it. Here come the Aggie. Perkins all the way and counters. There's Perkins and one more. Foul is on number 33. That's First make that tonight. Steel power drive of the game as Perkins after the turnover. Coast to coast. It'll go to the line using the glass. There is Perkins, as I said, the one lone bright spot for the Aggies on offense tonight. Now six of eight from the field with 14 points. Coming into this game, averaging only six points per game. So obviously he adds to his season high with that free throw. He's got 15. Aggies a step up. Pressure in backcourt. Perkins is another kid. It just seems like his role has changed a little bit and he's not as comfortable as he was at the end of the year. I, I think a lot of us thought, Mark, coming into the year that this Aggie team would start the year how they ended the year last year. They are actually better right now than they were this time last year. They were vastly improved throughout the course of the year last year. And then again, that with the, with the losing Collette, it kind of set them back and it's taken a while to kind of get back uh, defining roles and kind of figuring out who they are. Evans got in the way of Dunning, so a fourth foul called on Lou Evans. Marks down Joe Cravens, Jenny Cabner in Logan, Utah tonight as the Aggies and the Anteaters go at it for a 59th time. A lot of history between these two teams. They were in the same conference years. Well, the Aggies were in the old PCAA for a long time that turned into the Big West. Well, Stu Morrill was here. And the Aggies went through three different conferences. They went from the Big West to the WAC, to the Mountain West. There's Stu Morrill, the winningest coach in the history of Utah State basketball with his pretty wife, Vicki. Stu, an awful good friend of mine. I liked him a lot better when I used to beat him every once in a while. I didn't beat him very often, though, I'll tell you. Another rejection by Jai. Kick out. Nelson, that goes down. And Irvine has been impressive. Their backcourt has shot lights out. They really have. Remember, I, I said earlier they came off a game where they were 6 of 21 up in Moraga against St. Mary's, but they do a great job of finding each other, not just the two starting guards, but add Jaron Martin in there. Perry's had to touch him beyond the arc. Weren't you a coach at Irvine at one point? I coached there for one season with an old friend of mine. We went one and 25, and they asked us not to come back. <laughs> and not surprisingly so. Well, that almost went for Nelson back of the iron. Perkins brings it down. You were colder than a Crick Rock that whole season? If we had a whole season of colder than a Crick Rock. Good rebound by Grayson Moore. He'll draw the foul. It's been a tough one for the Aggies at home. They trail the Anteaters, who went to the NCAA tournament last year. That big man, 60 to 46. Anteaters shooting 63 percent this half. The Aggies did a nice job of guarding in the first half. Held them to 40 percent from the field, 22 from three, and not near. I don't know if it's lack of defense or the Anteaters are have just settled into a groove offensively. But not only 60 percent. 3% from the field, 71%, 5 of 7 from 3. Knocked away, turnover. Perry on the dribble. To the hoop. Not going to go. Moore tries to follow it. Grayson comes out with it. Evans underneath. And Moore loses the handle. Now Evans will try a 3. Short. 
And right down to Mike Best. Evan should have reversed that ball from there. He had a shot, but you know, that's not the guy you want shooting from there. As after that offensive rebound, you'd like to see the ball get reversed at that point. Aaron Wright loses the handle. Here comes Perry again. He's got Evans. Evans the trailer. Foul. Not gonna go, but he'll step to the line. Now remember, Perry just missed one at the rim. Lou Evans missed one at the rim. And those aren't wide open layups, but those are what I used to call college layups. Those are ones you got to make go in there. And I understand Lou Evans got fouled to get himself to the free throw line. But at some point, you got to be mentally tough enough to make those go in. Soon to be Lou Evans from his time in Salt Lake in high school. A little transfer in here from Tulsa. Well, Evans would have been a and is a nice part of this Aggie team. Uh, had he been playing alongside of and been like the, the second post or the third post in that rotation with more Colette and him. Now you're looking at a whole different animal. Token pressure in the backcourt from the Aggies. Trying to hang in here. Turnover as Evans got a hand on it. Kick out. Perry's been hot. Got it! Oh, Perry. Oh, Perry. Perry was only 4 of 21 before this game from the three point line. Tonight, just filling it up from there. Look at Nelson shoot it. Too strong. Ball comes down the rebound. Fans could use another bucket, but there's a foul as Perkins runs into right, and right draws the foul. He's the back to Perry again. William Perry, I love the way he held his follow through here. Watch him hold that follow through till the ball gets to the rim. That's what you call staying in your shot or finishing your shot, and he's shooting it pretty darn well tonight. Sure, Mark's back in now for the Julian Perry from McKinney, Texas. After the seventh game of the year last year was inserted to, into the starting lineup and started the rest of the year, was mostly a defensive stalwart, but was in his lineup earlier in the year. Like I say, had trouble shooting it in. Now this win from Martin, but pulled down by Moore. Perkins, one against the team, draws the foul on Mike Best. Well, Mark, one reason the Aggies aren't getting the fast break going is they're getting stops down at the Shooting two. So Perkins goes back to the free throw line. Perkins could make this obviously a seven point game, and the Aggies still with a shot of things here. Now what Irvine has going in their favor is their two older guards that are both outstanding free throw shooters and very well, uh, very well healed, very experienced. In fact, Luke Nelson shooting 100 percent, 16 for 16 from the free throw line. So those are the type of guards you want to protect the lead. Perkins has a game high 17 here tonight with 4:30 to go. Throws it up. Long back end rebound. Perkins. Down the left side has more. Wide open. Lou Evans. Can he get this to go down? Yes! And the Indians are going to call a timeout. It's a 13 0 run for Utah State. And they are within four. Evans hits that to pull the Aggies within four. Remember, I talked about when you're not shooting the ball good, you don't have a lot of enthusiasm. All of a sudden, the Aggies are shooting it. They're enthusiastic. The crowd is enthusiastic. This is the type of Aggie team I think everyone expected to see tonight. Down four. It's the 46th season they've played here at the D. Glenn Smith Spectrum. Ja! Evans came out on him. Mamadou catches him. 
finishes it easily. A great answer by the Anteaters there. A veteran team got the ball reversed not once, but twice, and then found an easy target in Jive. Back to back threes for Evans. It's a three point game. And yeah, they're making some noise here in Logan. Young, dribble drive, throws it up, and Young with another hoop. I talked about those older guards for the Anteaters, the junior and the senior, Alex Young, the senior. Very, very experienced. He didn't seem to be riding at all. Jalen Moore, short, tipped around, kept alive, but there's Jai. Standing tall at 7'6". First time these two teams have met in the last seven years. But this series dates back to 1979. Let's see what kind of finish we have with 2.23 to go. Young looking at Jai, he steps out. And that rims around, and Jalen Moore rips it down. Great rebound by Moore. Two hands right at the rim. Oh, and I thought that was going to be a great finish. Great hustle by Lou Evans. To chase He's committed that on that drive. Moore back up and in the middle. Perkins. Nope. And Lou Evans comes in. Actually, Grayson Moore came in and gets fouled. As Moore came in with the hops. Just a lot better effort by the Aggies in this last 10 minutes. And that's the type of effort they needed for 40 minutes. But all of a sudden, crashing the board. Two straight offensive rebounds there. One by Lou Evans and one by Grayson Moore. And again, just a lot of good things happen when you play hard. You can't hang your hat on whether the ball's going in or not. And that's kind of what happened to the Aggies for... The first, I don't know, 30 minutes mark maybe this game. The ball wasn't going in, and they just didn't have a lot of enthusiastic play. I think you know that guy, Jimmy Moore? Jimmy Moore scored over 1,400 points here for the Aggies. The father of Grayson and Jalen then went on to be an assistant coach here for several years, now an administrator. I told him before the game I had a hard time calling him an administrator. He's just an old basketball coach in my eyes. Jalen was close to getting the rebound on that missed free throw. Four-point game. The Aggies haven't helped themselves much at the free throw line tonight. Or in the last couple of possessions, I should say. Ooh, Young almost walked. They move it around. Martin dribble drive. Jai. And forces his up and up and gets fouled. Foul is on Pretty good foul. Jai is... Not a great free throw shooter. He's two for two. Those happened real early in the game. That's the one thing that is kind of a liability in his game, but he shot those first two very well. That's a, what happens then. Different time frame of the game with 128 on the clock. And that look for Mamadou Jai. Line driver. Wow, is he big. Look how, how wide he is through the shoulder. Five-point game. You see the numbers for Jai. <laughs> he just holds the basketball one-handed. And that was definitely too strong. Oh, a big rebound. What a rebound for the Anteaters from Aaron Wright. And, and that's one you just got to have. You just got to concentrate on the block out on that. And that the, the Aggies just shot themselves in the foot, not being able to cash in on that missed free throw. Jai wanted the basketball. Gets it underneath and slams it home. And that came from Mike Best, that pass, 6'10 to 7'6. Jai has 17 points and 13 rebounds. Third straight double-double for the big man. Out to Perkins. 
UCI in their 2 3 zone. And Moore throws it away to right. Ahead of the court on the run out is Nelson. And Utah State got to take a timeout. Nelson had a little hang on the rim there. Utah State with two big mistakes. They don't get that. So they'll roll it in and wait on the clock. Perkins at midcourt. Quick shot, Perry. He's been hot. And that's well strong. And the foul immediately on Nelson. And now the Anteaters will take it out. Their fifth team foul by the Aggies. Again, they're going to have to foul one more time. Let the Anteaters take it out and then foul again and send them to the free throw line. Just used seven seconds. Dunning on, best off. So we've got an inbounds play. The Anteaters have. They get it to Young. Fouled by Moore. So there's two of the three. And you can expect the Anteaters not to throw the ball to Jai on this possession. He's the worst of the four or the five free throw shooters on the floor. They, the Anteaters with four guards in right now, all good free throw shooters. And a foul on Luke Nelson. Nelson has 13 in the game. He hasn't shot from the line, but he came into the game 16 of 16 from the charity strike. Just about 100%, I believe, isn't it? You can do that math, can't you? <laughs> And that one hit nothing but the bottom of the net. Luke Nelson and Alex Young, two outstanding guards. Again, the, uh, the Anteaters pick to win the Big West Conference and go to their second straight NCAA tournament. Nelson came into the game with 808 career points as Perkins forces that one. And then it comes down to best and the token foul. Upcoming schedules, we'll start with the Aggies, Utah State. First home game in December. Will they stay here at the Spectrum? They've got a little holiday tournament coming up with three teams. Then they begin Mountain West play at San Jose State. On January 2nd, San Diego State coming to town. Well, those next four have, are a very favorable schedule for the Aggies. They, they, they have three straight in their own tournament here. And uh, even though they lost for the first time ever last year and then San Jose, so they've got kind of a chance to, to find themselves, so to speak. Perry fires one of the goes down. It's at 71-63. And the Aggies will take a timeout. That gives us a chance to show you UC Irvine's upcoming schedule. Mentioned that uh, most Gets money for the program, and yeah. we're trying to build the program, and, and yeah. building it they are. He's done a great job. Russell Turner played Division Three basketball at Hamden Sydney College in Virginia, his home state. And coached under Dave Odom at Wake Forest, Mike Montgomery at Stanford, Don Nelson with the Golden State Warriors. He's had some pretty good, uh, pretty good teachers, so to speak, in his coaching background, and, and a really uh, a delightful guy to talk to. I don't know him well, but we talked for length before the game and. Uh, He's, uh, he's, a, he's a guy that doesn't take himself too seriously and the, the game too seriously. He coaches his heart out now. Don't get me wrong, but he has a great perspective of things. Alex Young, if he can go for 20 here, can give Turner's team a 10-point lead. And that happens with 11 seconds to go. And if you're at the other bench, my good friend Tim Durier, Early in his head coaching career, you're asking yourself, why did I want to do this again? And Jai going to dribble it out. And that's, and the ball game. Our final score. that's the ball game. Russell Turner.